Lift up your voice in song to the mighty one. Lift up your hands in praise. Fall on your knees at the throne of the Holy One. Offer yourself to the Ancient of Days. He is the light that shines in the darkness. He is the rock that stands. Glory and honor and power be unto the Lamb. Lift up your voice in song to the Mighty One. Lift up your hands in praise. Fall on your knees at the throne of the Holy One. Offer yourself to the Ancient of Days. Jesus Christ is Lord. At the name of Jesus, every knee must bend, every tongue proclaim, Jesus Christ is Lord. I'm Father Al Lauer. This is Daily Bread. I'm so glad to be able to share the Word of God with you. It's always a privilege, but to, today it's even extra special. I have a great announcement for you. I want you to be the first to know. So let's pray. I, I, won't, I won't tell you right now, but we're going to pray first, but you'll find out right after the prayer, okay? Father, we pray for that person, each person, everyone, to give their lives to you. Thank you, Lord, for the privilege of living for you and for living for you alone. Lord, May we love you with all heart, soul, mind, and strength. Lord, heal that one. May she forgive her husband. May that man give his whole life to you. Lord, remove cancer in the name of Jesus. That cancer be gone. That sickness be gone. Thank you, Jesus. You are alive. You are risen from the dead, and we praise you. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. All right, the announcement, the big one. I hope you're excited about it, brothers and sisters. I want to announce to you that we are beginning, we at Presentation Ministries who bring you this program, Daily Bread, we are beginning. By faith, it's going to take uh, a miracle of God, but he's done it before and he can do it again. What is called Our Lady of Guadalupe Bible College. Our Lady of Guadalupe Bible College. Now, most people are familiar with Bible colleges, especially if they are Protestant brothers and sisters. But to have a Catholic Bible college, people say, I, I never heard of such a thing. Well, now you have. I'm glad you're listening. Uh, a Catholic Bible college named after Our Lady, Our Lady of Guadalupe, patroness of the Americas. Why are we doing this? You say, oh, you must have millions of dollars. You must have all these buildings and all these professors. No, we don't have any of that stuff. This isn't, uh, this isn't a college. We're not teaching science and physics and uh, how to become a teacher and how to make money and how to market your skills. It's a Bible college. Why are we doing such a thing? Let me explain. I guess it has an awful lot to do with the Word of God, which means the Bible, the written Word, but also means the authoritative teachings of the church. That's the Word of God. And how important is the Word of God? That's the first question we like to focus on. How important is the Word of God? Well, let me just go through the Word of God to express how important the Word of God is. In Psalm 119, it says, God's Word is more precious than thousands of gold and silver pieces. Praise God. This Word is more precious than a thousand dollar bill. What if I told you, if you turn this program off, we'll send you a hundred dollar bill. I think a lot of people would turn it off right away, wouldn't they? But the Word is more precious than uh, thousands of gold and silver pieces. You know, and thousands of gold and silver pieces, that's not a dollar. Like a, like a silver piece would be worth, uh, you know, many, many days' wages. Uh, so it's worth hundreds of thousands of dollars. It's indefinitely valuable. All right. Uh, it says God's word is more um, to be desired than your favorite food, than honey from the comb. Say, I had a choice of eating my favorite food or getting into God's Word. What would I do? Well, most people say, I'd eat my favorite food. But uh, God says, the Word of God is more precious. The Word of God is so precious 
that if you meditate on it day and night, you'll be successful in whatever you do, no matter what. That's amazing. No matter what, no matter how difficult it is, you're doing what God wants you to do because you're doing it on the Word. It's on solid ground. The Word of God is, is so, so important. It's hard to express how important it is. I'll read something from 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. It says, All Scripture, that's the written Word of God, is inspired of God and is useful for teaching, for reproof, correction, and training in holiness, so that the man or woman of God may be fully competent and equipped for every good work. God's word will make you fully competent and equipped for every good work. You say, well, how can that be? There's no, no book in the world that can make you competent for every good work. It's hard for a book to make you competent for even one work. But how can this make you competent for every good work? Because it's the word of God. It's not just the word about God. It is the word from God himself. He worked through human instruments, but God wrote this book unlike any other book. They call, the Bible, they call this book the Bible. The Bible is Greek for book. You know, you say, well, why call this book the book? There's a lot of other books. But this is the book. This book is unlike any other book. This book in a class by itself. The, the word is so precious. It says in Romans chapter 10, verse 17, it says, we're saved by grace through faith. That's Ephesians 2, verse 8. But how do you get faith? Well, faith is, um, comes through hearing, hearing God. Well, how can you hear God? Hearing by the Word of God. If you don't have the Word of God, you won't be able to hear God. If you don't hear God, you won't have faith. You don't have faith. You don't accept grace. And you don't have salvation. So you see how important the Word of God is. You know, Jesus came to this earth. And what did He do? Like when He rose from the dead. I, I never can't get over this. When He rose from the dead, He spent the first resurrection afternoon walking about seven miles with two disciples on the road to Emmaus. And he interpreted for them every passage of the scripture that applied to him. Now, when you rise from the dead, you think you'd do something extra special, wouldn't you? Well, he did. He spent the whole afternoon in the Word. That evening, the first resurrection evening, guess what he did? He opened their minds to the understanding of the scripture, Luke chapter 24. That tells you an awful lot about how important this Word is. Well, that's what Jesus spent his whole resurrection afternoon and evening on. The very first one, first resurrection day of all. Uh, the Word, the Word, how precious is the Word of God. You know, they never called Christians Christians until they spent a whole year, probably, of daily study of the Bible. Now, if you, if you had to go through a year of daily study of the Bible before you were called a Christian, I don't know if we'd find too many people called Christians nowadays. That's in Acts chapter 11. In verse 26, the, the Word of God is uh, like a, like a two-edged sword. The Word of God is a light for our path, a lamp for our feet. The Word of God is a rock on which we can base our lives. The Word of God is the Word of God. Oh, brothers and sisters. Now, if the Word of God is so important, though heaven and earth pass away, the Word of God will never pass away, Luke 21. If it's that important, how does that apply to our lives? You say, well, I guess that means we should know the Word of God. Yes, I guess that would be a pretty good application. Well, how are we going to do that? You say, well, I guess we should um, study it. Yes, I guess we should study it in community with the gifts of the Spirit operating. I guess we should uh, read it every day. I guess we should know this whole Bible. Say, so, well, I, it'd take a long time for me to know the whole Bible. Well, how many years are you going to live? It, every day you can learn something from the Word of God. All right? If the Word of God is so important, it means we need to get into it. We wouldn't want to miss even one, one sentence, one verse of this Bible, because... If it's the Word of God, we wouldn't want to miss the cross T or the dotted I. That's what Jesus said in Matthew 5. He says, I've not come to abolish even the smallest part of a letter of the law until it's all fulfilled. 
Now, once you believe how important the Word of God is, how powerful the Word of God is, what a precious gift the Word of God is, how necessary the Word of God is to God's plan of salvation, then you make some practical conclusions. Now, I'm going to give you the practical conclusions that the Pope gives on several occasions, and this is really the official teaching of the Catholic Church. In the Pope's document, Lay Members of Christ's Faithful People, section 34, the Pope says, In the case of coming generations, the lay faithful must offer the very valuable contribution, more necessary than ever, of a systematic work of catechesis. A systematic work in catechesis means teaching the Word of God, teaching the teachings of the church, teaching the Bible. But it says, more than ever, it is necessary for a systematic work of catechesis. Systematic means there's a system. There's a, a whole big thing. It's not just a bunch of isolated facts. It's not Bible trivia. No, it all fits together, and it's rather extensive. It is a system, and we need to have systematic catechesis. Further on, same sections, uh, same book, Lay Members of Christ, Faithful People by Pope John Paul II, based on the World Synod of Bishops a few years ago. It says the situation today points to an ever-increasing urgency. It's urgent for systematic catechesis. Systematic teaching is an ever-increasing urgency for a doctrinal formation of the lay faithful. Not simply a better understanding, which is natural to faith dynamism, but also in enabling them to give a reason for their hoping in view of the world and its grave and complex problems. Therefore, and here it is again, the Pope's big word is a systematic approach to catechesis geared to age in the diverse situations of life is an absolute necessity. Have you had a systematic approach to, ed to catechesis? Now, possibly if you went through the catechism, there is a system to it. The only problem with the catechism is it doesn't cover enough and therefore the system is not complete and that's not the catechism's fault. I mean the old Baltimore catechism, the new catechism of the Catholic Church is systematic and it's about 700 pages worth of being systematic and it's comprehensive at least as much as a 700 page book can be and so it says there's an absolute necessity that doesn't mean it's a good idea or it would help a lot of people. It means you've got to have this or you're not going to have what it takes to live in this kind of world. We need a systematic approach to catechesis. It's an absolute necessity. All right, same passage. Lay members of Christ, faithful people. This is section 61. It talks about a post-baptismal catechesis in the form of a catechumenate. Even if you're baptized, it would be good for you to go through the system of education that is called the catechumenate. In another document from the Pope, I will give you shepherds, is the English translation of the title. The English title is Priestly Formation. In section 54, it says, theological formation is both complex and demanding. You're talking about priest here, but I think this applies to more than priest. It should lead the candidate for the priesthood to a complete and unified vision of the truths which God has revealed in Jesus Christ and of the church's experience of faith. So the priest needs a um, complete and unified vision. A complete and unified vision. A little bit more here in the Pope's document called The Splendor of Truth, the encyclical from Pope John Paul II. He talks about the catechism of the Catholic Church and it says this catechism, this new catechism, contains a complete and systematic exposition of Christian moral teaching. Pope John Paul II speaking to several European bishops in September, on September 17, 1992. He says, um, the objective 
of catechesis is twofold. Maturing the initial faith and then educating the true disciple of Christ by means of a deeper and more systematic knowledge. There is his word again. More systematic knowledge. And then he goes on and says, this deeper and more systematic knowledge of the person in the message of Christ represents an immense pastoral challenge. You, you understand, brothers and sisters? I hope you do. Uh, one more, one more quote. Uh, this is um, also from the Pope's uh, teaching to the Europe, several European bishops, September 17th, 1992. He says, The more the church, whether on a local or a universal level, gives catechesis priority over other works and undertakings, the results of which would be more spectacular, the more she finds in catechesis a strengthening of her internal life as a community of believers and of her external activity as a mission church. So what, what's being said here? The Pope is saying that um, catechesis has a priority over other works of the church. Um, and the more we give it a priority, the better things are going to be interiorly, strengthening our interior life and exteriorly with the external activity of the church as a missionary church. So the Pope has made it clear we have an absolute necessity for... Um, this uh, more extensive catechesis. And so we have been teaching the Bible for years. We teach it on the telephone. I hope you call our Bible telephone number, 451. Mm -mm, I better, I forget it now. <laughs> I forget my number. I have to look it up real quick. Uh, 451, I, when you want to remember something, you always forget it. Uh, at least I do. 451-3448. That's in Cincinnati. 451-3448. Uh, area code 513. We have it in several other cities. If you're hearing it from another city, maybe you'd be interested in getting it. Well, um, we, so we teach the Bible in little, little snippets there on the telephone. And we teach here on the TV. And we teach on the radio. And we have our One Bread, One Body books. In case you don't get that, you write in. We'll send you those teachings on the daily Eucharistic readings. And we do missions and retreats all around this country and wherever we are called to be. And so we've been giving the word out. We have the discipleship program. We have the Bible teachers program. We have the Bible institute. We've been teaching the word, teaching the word, teaching the word, teaching the word. But when I read that, I said, uh, you keep saying systematic. You keep saying <laughs> systematic. You, you, you're, you're saying you want something complete. You want something that covers it all. Well, we cover big sections of it, but we don't have it systematic. We don't have it step by step by step. We don't have it total coverage. And you say that that's an absolute necessity. But we don't have that. So we said, well, that calls for a Bible college at Our Lady of Guadalupe Bible College and say, well, whoever thought up such a crazy idea? The Pope did. The Pope did. He didn't quite put it in the terms of a Bible college, but if you want to translate this, uh, it's going to have to be translated in parents uh, discipling their children at home, and it's going to have to be translated into a parish being truly a discipling um, ministry. And it's probably going to have to be translated into other types of ministries. And probably, first of all, into other types of ministries because, as you know, the parish is not very good at discipling because many of the people in the parish have not at all even been evangelized. And even though the place to get a systematic catechesis would be the home, what if the parents haven't had it? How are they going to pass it on to the children? So we need some sort of ministry to kind of break through in this less than ideal situation. And we feel our Bible college is something that can do that. You might say, well, how do you... How do you get in on this? Do you have to be you have to be a college grad? Is this for graduate school? Well, some of our people probably are uh, college graduates, and um, some of them even doctoral um, PhDs, uh, but some don't have any degrees at all. Uh, this is not a matter of uh, accreditation. You know, to to come out of a Bible college is not going to make you make a bunch of money. 
Uh, it's, it's for the sake of learning the way God meant learning to be. Learning is primarily for the purpose of, of getting closer to Him, of deepening the relationship with Him, of learning how to serve Him and His people better. So learning is for love. Learning is for life. Learning is for relationship. That's how we do learning. You say, well, you mean you don't make a bunch of money off of this? You got it. You got it. But then we don't have to charge a bunch of money for it either. And so we can have students who are 16-year-olds. We can have students who are 40-year-olds with a, with a Ph.D. in theology. And I'm telling you, they'll both be really uh, transformed by the Spirit. Now, even though we'll have the same titles for the courses, obviously we will um, uh, kind of tune them differently for different people. And we can do that because we aren't bogged down with accreditation and finances. Oh, we'll need some money, but we won't have any set fee to be involved in the Bible college. And you might say, gee, this sounds great, you know. And there's three sections of the curriculum. The first one is what we call the basics, which are all the books of the Bible. Not that you'll have to study them all, but you will want, we want you to have a systematic understanding of the Bible. And then uh, there will also be a systematic understanding of the teachings of the church. We'll go through the whole catechism of the Catholic Church. There will be other types of, of real basic teachings like uh, what does it mean to be saved in the kingdom of God and life in the Spirit and what is your vocation and, and things like that. And the, so there, there's the first section called the basics. We'll have three goals in this, in this Bible college. And, and you can... Um, if it takes you 10 years to meet those three goals, well, then it takes you 10 years to meet those three goals. If it takes you two years to meet them, well, whatever. If you can only put in a, a little time at this, well, fine. If you can take five courses at once, well, whatever you can do. But um, the second section, the first one's the basics. The second section is what we would call equipping people for ministries that all people have. So... Uh, ministries for everyone, like everyone's called to worship, everyone's called to build community, everyone's called to renew their church, everyone's called to disciple, uh, you know, everyone's called to evangelize. So, but do, do, you know, say, okay, everybody's called to worship, go ahead and worship. You say, what do you mean? I don't even know what worship is. I don't know how to do it. I don't, what's the Bible say about it? We'll see, we'll equip you for things that everyone needs to know. And then to get very practical about it, Remember, we don't want to just be hearers of the word, but doers. To get real practical about it, we'll zero in on special calls that you have. You may have a special call to lead a Christian community. You may have a special call to be leaven, light, salt in a secular workplace. And we're going to really zero in so you'll do the best job you possibly can there. You may have a special call to disciple young people. You may have a special call to deliver people from the evil one, a special call for healing ministry, for, inter for an intercessory ministry that everyone has, but some have that in a much more intensified way. So, well, three things. First, we'll give you the basics. You'll have the foundation. You'll have the systematic, complete understanding of divine revelation through the church and the Bible. Then we'll zero in on, well, we won't quite zero in, but we'll start to apply this into to things, that ministries that we, everybody who's a Christian has to do. And then we'll zero in on it even more to you, exactly what you're calling. And we're going to equip you for that work. We're going to train you with the teachings of the church and the Bible for that word. So, wow, this is going to be, oh, this is going to be fantastic. And you might say, well, I wish I was in Cincinnati. You can do this through home study. Not, not completely through home study. You're going to have to do some uh, learning in the context of Christian community with live teachers and things like that. But you can do a lot of it in home study. Maybe, maybe you're from California. You could do uh, you know, five courses you know, through home study and then you know, come into Cincinnati for a week a year or something like that. But uh, anybody is be able to get in on this. I don't have a bunch of money. Well... Only we don't. We will suggest ten ten dollars per uh, per hour of of teaching. But if you don't have the money for that, that's just a suggestion. So I never heard of a college like that. This college is not bogged down with uh, trying to make money or trying to you know get people into the system of uh, of a marketable skills. Well, those are all wonderful things to do, but 
But there's other people doing that. We need somebody to write and get down to a systematic, comprehensive uh, teaching of the Word of God as it comes to the church in the Bible. And that's what we are going to do. So we'll have housewives, we'll have teenagers, we'll have PhDs, we'll have truck drivers, we'll have people in California, we'll have people in Mexico, we'll have people uh, down, down in the street from our ministry center say, where's your big campus? You have 50,000 buildings? Our campus is Presentations Ministry Center, several parishes, St. Martin's, uh, St. Lawrence, uh, St. Ignatius, um, St. Xavier, uh, St. Antoninus, um, our Lady of Victory, and many people's homes. See, the homes should be the main place for education. And so this is, um, I guess you'd say, really getting right back to the early church type catechesis. Remember, after the first Pentecost, it says, they devoted themselves to the didache. That means to the teaching. Oh, let's get back to that first Pentecost. All right, for more information, you just, you just uh, write us. The, the address is on the on the screen or you call us. Uh, my number is 241-8466 or the area code 513-241-8466. 513-241-8466. Let's pray. Oh Lord, we just put this Bible college in your hands. Our Lady of Guadalupe, patroness of this Bible college, we ask you to pray. Lord, may this work be pleasing to you and may it really uh, affect what the Pope and the bishops are calling for, a comprehensive catechesis, a comprehensive teaching. Thank you, Lord. We give you the praise. Amen. May Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lift up your hands in praise. Fall on your knees at the throne of the Holy One. Offer yourself to the Ancient of Days. He is the light that shines in the darkness. He is the rock that stands. Glory and honor and power be unto